Lake Charter Township. And I'd like to start the meeting with the Pledge to the Allegiance. Mr. Anderson, would you read it? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Consumers Energy, we're updating our electric meter technology across the state because as surprising as it may seem, we don't know how much electricity each customer uses unless we put a person in a vehicle, drive to the person's home, walk up the driveway, look at the house, then punch in the numbers. The new technology will just send us a text message once a day each night letting us know how much electricity each customer has used. We won't have to estimate bills anymore, which a lot of people are happy about. And then also, the following day, after we've installed the new meter, folks will be able to go online and check their home energy use information online if they want to. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be using a cellular telephone technology. I'll explain that briefly in just a moment. So one of the benefits is no more estimated reads. Mm -hmm. Second thing is that we don't know when the power is out at a person's home unless the person is home realizes it, picks up the telephone, and calls us and reports the outage. In 2016, we'll be able to have the meters actually generate a work order. Even when folks aren't home, when they're on vacation in the spring, we get a nice storm, lines go down, meters are going to send us a message before the good folks with sump pumps come home to find their houses without power. Uh, that can be a problem. Uh, we will be here in Grand Blank updating the electric meters about this time next year. Okay. Mid-fall, late fall or so, we'll uh, first send a blue card like this to each of your residents, each of our customers, letting them know what we're doing, why we're doing, what the benefits are, and where they can get more information. This card comes to them through the mail one month in advance of us coming to their homes. And then two weeks prior, law enforcement likes this especially, two weeks prior to us getting to a person's home to upgrade the meter, we send them a letter letting them know what sort of vehicle we'll be driving, a white Ford Focus, our employees carry their uh, employee identification cards. We wear brightly colored safety clothing, and we knock at the door and let them know that we're going to be in the yard to replace the meter. Uh, then we go and uh, pull the old meter, put in the new meter, and uh, that can cause an outage of three to five minutes. Uh, then after we've updated that electric meter, pretty exciting stuff, we leave this 
beautiful dream come out with a door hanger, letting them know they've got themselves a new meter. Now, folks don't need to be home for this, but we find that um, with respect to our seniors and retirees, uh, some folks who are seniors and retirees like to be there. We get a new meter once every 20 years. So, so they come out and they, uh, they watch us change the meter. They can make an appointment. Uh, if we have to leave the blue door hanger on the door saying we're sorry, we weren't able to upgrade the meter, this generally means you have a very large dog very close to the meter. <laughs> we'll come back on another day. Uh, I will leave for you tonight some brochures broken down into three sections. How does it work? What's in it for me? And when will I get mine? How does it work? We're using the cellular telephone system. Uh, I know that DTE updated its meters uh, not so long ago. They created a, a radio network to send the messages from the meters to the radio network. We're using the cellular network. And the cell um, message that we'll get from the meter is encrypted, it's encoded with no personal information, not a name, not an address, just the premise number of the meter. So if you live at, uh, at 235 Saginaw, the premise number might be 828-242-9, and that's the premise number. And then 10 kilowatt hours for the day. And you'll be able to go online, as I mentioned, at consumersenergy.com slash smartenergy. That address is on the back of this brochure. And look at your energy use after you create your own password, your own secure password. Look at that information. So you, this is important to a lot of people. Folks will be able to see what their bill is going to be like before the end of the month. They can see where they're going. So we just had Thanksgiving. If you're if you've got family like mine, folks come for a day, stay for a week. You know, use a lot of power. and. Uh, the folks will be able to see where they are relative to their budget uh, when those sorts of things happen. Okay, so we're using cellular telephone technology. Uh, what's in it for me? Better outage management. Right now, again, you may call us and say you're out of power. We'll say we'll get you restored by 6 o'clock. We get out to your subdivision, restore power, and then somebody comes home and says somehow you missed us. And so we're rolling trucks back up from Flint at 8 o'clock at night. That's not efficient. We're going to be more efficient, more cost effective. And then when will I get mine? We started this program in 2012 in West Michigan, and we've been working our way south and east. So as I mentioned, we will be in the greater Flint area beginning mid-summer, and then out here in Grand Blanc, probably mid-fall, late fall. And uh, if it's consistent with the format, I will be happy to try to answer any questions, ma'am. I think the main question is, this is very similar to our water uh, placement. It may be, you probably have a drive-by system. I'm not certain. Uh, I know what your water <laughs> central readings. Is it central reading as well? That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. your technology so the, so makes the, a lot of sense. Yeah, so the people are, are somewhat familiar. And folks frequently ask me about jobs. There are 335 meter readers in the state of Michigan that we have. 200 will be affected, but we're looking at using those folks in other positions mm -hmm. along the way. But in the long run, we are going to be able to control our costs and be more efficient Very while providing good. better service to our customers. Very good. Thank you. My pleasure. Any Thank questions? You. Two points. I assume residents won't notice any interruption in their power during the new install? Three to five minutes, typically. Okay, uh, there will be an interruption. Yeah, that's why we knock the door in case somebody's in the middle of a document on their computer. <coughs> want to let them know that there will be a quick, short interruption. But people don't have to be home. They can make appointments if they want to, but they don't have to be home. And uh, again, we're doing this to upgrade electric meter technology to provide better service. There are all sorts of myths and misunderstandings out there about updated meter technology, not part of something that the United Nations, National Security Agency, or anybody else is pushing. We're just a 127-year-old utility company trying to provide better service to our customers and control our costs. Okay. Can a person opt out from yeah. making that? Yeah, about one half of 1% of our customers have been saying for one reason or another, sometimes I think it has to do with the myths and misunderstandings that are out there on the internet, um, that they don't want the meter. So that means that we have to uh, leave the old meter technology and continue to send out a meter reader. So there are fees. There's a, a one-time fee to support all of the old uh, meter programs, $69.39. And then each month, $9.72 for us to send out a meter reader each month. But as I mentioned, that's only one half of 1%, so 99.5% of our customers are satisfied with the technology. Because some people think there's a danger associated with it, right? Yeah, I, I mean, mean I, I know some people in Ann Arbor that just about lost their mind. <laughs> There's all, all sorts of stories out there, but I can assure you that the Michigan Public Service Commission 
you know, the Public Service Commission of Michigan, and numerous states across the country have heard these sorts of issues and investigated them. Uh, I can give you a report, if you'd like, from the Michigan Public Service Commission. I'd probably like some of those around just to I'd be happy to do that. They used to direct people to it. Yeah, they've been, they've been investigated thoroughly. I know Representative Tom McMillan out of Rochester, yeah. Falls, Michigan, has been pushing for a bill for opting out. I believe that's why you can opt out here in Michigan. Um, my concern, I, I didn't realize you were going to be coming tonight to make this presentation, so I would have had a few more questions, but I hope you come back. But, yeah, I'll uh, come back whenever you want. To answer some of them, because I, I would like to get some questions together to to ask you. My, mine are more around limiting use and uh, already, for example, if, if I use a certain amount of electricity, especially during the month of December, if people have Christmas lights, that kind of thing, uh, my rate doubles if I reach a certain amount. But I can see with the smart meter, uh, the rate's changing based on when I use power, uh, if it's during peak hours and it's off peak, things of that nature. Oh, also, if, that I'm running, if I'm running my air conditioner and mm -hmm whatever regulation comes into effect saying I'm using too much electricity, being able to reduce that, those kinds of things are what more. And that, that based on regulation, again, I can get into greater detail at some point in the future, but not based on regulation, but customers will be able to enroll in those programs if they're beneficial to them and their lifestyles. Those sorts of programs wouldn't be good for everybody they're using a lot of electricity at peak times, but at off peak times, they would be able to buy the electricity then at below what our basic rate is of 13 cents a kilowatt hour. So, uh, a time of use pricing program, good for folks who buy a lot of electricity at off peak, not so good for somebody who buys a lot of electricity on peak. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now it looks like you're going to run away. No, <laughs> not at all. I'm here. I'm, 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 I'm leaving this information with you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah. Yes. Question to you. To, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, what, I only see electric meter here. What about gas? Great question. So we've got 1.8 million electric customers across the state, across our service territory. We've got 1.9 million gas customers. We only have 600,000 electric customers who also get gas from us. So for those folks who get both electric and gas, we'll put a communications module on the gas meter so it can talk to the electric meter and send us how much energy use for, for each service, and we won't have to send out a meter reader or estimate bills for either of those services. So I don't, I no longer have to butcher my shrub then. <laughs> That's, reading yeah, that. or shovel, shovel to get us in like last year. Yeah, we had to estimate 40% uh, of our bills in January and February last year, so getting away from those estimates is something that people are yeah. Sign me up, I'm all in. Yeah. 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 So will we see a $9.72 reduction in our bill? <laughs> <laughs> no, because there's more, more, right. more to the, the meter yeah. charge than just the meter reading. Yeah. But keep in yeah. mind, uh, this is cellular technology. Yeah. So the same folks that are having trouble in Ann Arbor are probably calling on their cell phone to complain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree. I agree. But, yeah. you know, there's, there's some environmentalists there that well, look into stuff. With, with respect to whatever, mm -hmm. we love all of our customers. <laughs> Whatever may be the basis for someone wanting to keep the different technology, we've got a program for them. Mm -hmm. And Mr. McMillan's actions actually predate when those programs right. were in place, and so it's a right. move point yeah. now. And yeah. do they, does it run all the time? It's not, it's not reading every minute, is it? Sure. The meter is, it is. Yeah, just, just okay. like the meter does now. You use any electricity okay. and it's, it's measured. Yeah. It's just a, a device to measure mm -hmm. use. Okay. Yeah. All righty, I'm good with that. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy to come back uh, to speak to Rotary Clubs, mm -hmm. Juan's Clubs, okay. to <laughs> right. you folks. Very Thank you for being so gracious with your time. Did you get some of your cards? Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. I can give you some more. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Can you this one? We're in the wrong jacket. <laughs> some groups would be like homeowners association and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Some 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 Anybody has questions? Or my, uh, my colleague, Kevin Keene, you may know, yeah, yeah. who uh, may also be out to assist as well. Oh, I'll tell you as well. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for coming out, man. Yeah. Pleasure. Thanks. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. Just letting you know, well in advance what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll be here. I'm not going to go. Uh, okay. Very good. Anyone else for public comment? Okay. Thank you for putting the ordinance on the uh, website I saw today. There are a couple of things I think some of the improvements are good. 
I just wanted to alert you, I've had the discussion with our planner. Um, there is no height maximum on the wall signs now for buildings. You just have a square footage where before we had two feet and 36 feet. So just pay attention, especially on that one, and at least pay attention to what some of them might do. We also um, are now taking down all of the structure of the sign, not just the sign face. We did it before, and then we got away from it and just took out the sign face. So I would like to know, now that we're taking down the whole structure, and we do have some buildings that are vacant, businesses have been gone for more than 30 days, are you going to start a recount of the 30 days after the publication of this ordinance? Or can we get to those ASAP? Thank you. And oh, I want it publicly known I'm going after Jack Wheatley to get a right hand turn off the door highway going north on I 75. I've got it on the Yep, okay. <laughs> Any other public comment? Madam Chair, while you're on public comment, uh, we've got Mr. Spetter in the audience. If you want to I was to just going to. <laughs> okay. Mr. Spetter, yes. would you come up and introduce yourself to the people around you and get on the, get on the uh, movie or the video so people can. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my name is David Strebetter, um, and I'm the new fire chief for the Grand Lake uh, Fire Department. And uh, I'm very happy to be here, and I'm looking for uh, to be here for a long time and to work with everybody and have a, a good career with you guys. Welcome. We didn't expect you tonight. Thank you for showing up. My pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I have to. And, and I'll be starting uh, December 22nd. It's my first day. So. And we will be having a swearing in ceremony in January to make it all official. Very good. Thank you. Uh, so, okay. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions for me here? I have a comment, first of all. Thank you. Welcome. I, I do want to add, not even his first day, he's not even officially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And this is yeah. at least the third meeting. That I've attended where, where he's been here. So he's already he's hitting the ground running. So yeah, I appreciate right. that. Thank you for your efforts and put into this. Thank you so much. Welcome. Oh, we're still on public comment. I sort of want to apologize to Dennis because I didn't get the call till like four o'clock or so. It was late in the day that, that I got the call. And he said, Teleport I'm coming. Mm -hmm. So I had a second to tell the clock on somebody else. Okay. So, so I'll call earlier next time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I've got his card if I have any yeah. questions. Yeah, right, exactly. Okay, moving on to uh, approval of the minutes. And uh, we've already had the comment. Uh, so, uh, and have them amended. Uh, we can have those amended. So I'm asking for approval of those minutes with the minutes as suggested. So, Clark. Larry and Jude. Clark and Jude. Clark and Jude. Clark motion, Jude, second. Thanks. Yeah, I said you guys thought we liked it. Okay, all those in favor? Thank you. All right. All those opposed? And now we'll go to the Treasurer's report. Mr. Cusack. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. It's my pleasure to present the monthly bills. The general total is one million eighty-eight thousand one hundred eighty-three dollars and seventy-four cents. The DPW total is nine hundred eighty-two thousand thirty-five dollars and fifty-six cents. The solid waste total is one hundred seventeen thousand four hundred forty-one dollars and sixty-seven cents. The campus fund is one hundred fifty dollars, and the grand total is two million one hundred eighty-seven thousand eight hundred ten dollars and ninety-seven cents. Who will be the last presented, Madam Chair? There's second. My second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? You have your money. All right, thank you. And are you uh, going to present the FANG also? Yes, on the FANG, this is the FANG's <coughs> township membership dues. Uh, and normally, uh, it, has, it wasn't presented, we've already paid it, but uh, uh, Mr. Lang would like us to do this every time beforehand, but we just want to report it that we did pay $49,563.90 for those annual membership dues. 
and then in the future we will be presenting them in ahead of time before we pay them so that the board knows about them. But we just like to have one um, because it's been paid. And uh, we went over some of the factors behind that at the Tuesday meeting. And uh, it was based on, on, on population. Our membership was based on population and SEB. Right, and we've been in this program for quite a while, so it's just it's just a clarification thing that we want to keep the straight. So. Very good. Thank you. And do we need a roll call on there, Mr. Director? No, you don't even need a motion on it. It's already been paid, and uh, we, it was just so we recognize it. Right. We just want to recognize that it was paid and, and have a uh, brief discussion about it. So you're, you're fine. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, new business. Uh, there is no unfinished business, so we're moving on to new business. The board will, shall consider a resolution to reject the offer to receive all the tax reverted properties listed in a memo from the Genesee County Treasurer's Office dated November uh, 21st, 2014. I thought we were going to keep Right, that's so what I thought, Madam Chair. Yeah. I, I thought we were going to keep the resolution. Yeah, right. Uh, we are. Okay, we so we can just amend that. We changed the resolution to exclude the rebuilt property. And by excluding it, that means that yeah. we're going to take possession of it. And I'll communicate that with the treasurer's office as well. So we want to change, make sure we cover the motion that. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah, well, the resolution, there was an amended resolution that was forwarded. Okay. But as long as the minutes, because when we go back to the minutes, we'll yeah. know that right. that was right. and be maintained here. So it'd be good to have it in the record. I'll make a motion that the board approve the resolution as amended per Mr. Lady. Support. Roll call. Mr. Bennett. Yes. Ms. Huff, yes. Mrs. Hoffman. Yes. Mr. Guzik. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Dr. Reardon. Yes. Mr. Kent. Yes. Okay, the board shall consider an amendment to ordinance number 38 to add the regulation of a secondary fire suppression water service for non-domestic customers. This is a second reading of this amendment to the ordinance. Again, roll call. First of all, so moved. Support. Okay. Mr. Bennett. Yes. Myself, yes. Mrs. Hoffman. Yes. Mr. Guzik. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Dr. Rarin. No. And Mr. Kent. Yes. The board shall also consider an ordinance to amend the Graveland Township sewer system capital fee and usage charges. This is the first reading of this amendment to the ordinance. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Thank you. Second? Support. Okay. So supply it. Okay. Very thanks. Okay. Yes. Myself, yes. Mrs. Hoffman. Yes. Mr. Guzik. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Dr. Reardon. Yes. Mr. Kent. Senator Steen. Mr. Lay, this is for across the township, correct? Right? <coughs> One customer. Correct. Yes. Consider adopting the sign ordinance amendment. Uh, I'm sure I can skip. Can I skip one? Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, the board shall consider an ordinance to attend uh, to amend the Grand Lake Township water system capital DMV <coughs> charges. This is the first reading of this amendment to the ordinance. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Okay, Clark. Um, <laughs> Mr. Kent. Yes. Dr. Rarity. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Guzik. Yes. Mrs. Hoffman. Yes. Myself, yes. And Mr. Bennett.
adapting with uh, the signed ordinance amendment. Motion. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to the uh, sign ordinance amendment. Is there a second, please? As a uh, guiding, oh, basically hits the highlights of uh, the key changes that are included. Essentially, as you know, uh, this has been um, an issue where periodically the planning commission has gone back to study the, the sign ordinance. And one of the things we suggested this time is to really take a close look at it and actually maybe reformat it so it's a little easier to work mm -hmm. with. It's been somewhat cumbersome the way the format works and trying to read through text just to get the basic information of what you can do on the district. So we've created these tables that just make it easier to pull the information out. And at the same time, we've um, tried to bring some things up to speed. Uh, some of the highlights are, for example, we've tried to consolidate and update some of the definitions um, as it relates to signs. Um, for wall signs, one of the things, and um, this is Lane mentioned this, is that Planning Commission has recommended that the, right now you have a maximum of 24 inch high for a letter or insignia or logo on a wall sign. And in some, in review of some signs that have come in, it's presented a few challenges. Um, recently, even with Bagger Days, they came in, we have a nice little train logo. Um, they are hoping to make it larger, but we can't have a logo larger than when a building set back on the roadway, it gets pretty difficult to actually see some of those. So um, they felt that it was uh, appropriate to just not have it. You already have limits on the area of the sign anyway. I mean, it's 10% of the wall up to a maximum amount for the commercial yeah. districts. And for most who are within 100 feet, it's, it's 32 square feet. It's, yeah. and so, you're, so you're pretty limited there. And you know, usually signs are going to be longer um, than they are square because usually you have a, a company name or something you're trying to portray. So that, it kind of regulates itself. Yes, could someone come in and try to put in a two or three letter word and make it large and fill up the space? Maybe you could do that and you might see an abuse of that, but we don't really see it. We don't see it happening often. So I guess it's something that could be monitored to see if that became a problem. But the uh, planning commission wanted to give some more flexibility for businesses to be able to put up a larger logo and do some things like that. So that's why they suggested taking that 24 inch <coughs> maximum out. However, at the same time, there was a concern about sign clutter. A lot of people told me to put too much information with tiny um, text on signs, particularly on ground signs. And when you're driving along, those are close to the road. Those are really meant to be viewed by the motorists driving by. And so they asked um, for us to research uh, some minimum letter heights. And so we've done that and those are based on, on speed actually. So if it's 45 miles an hour or more, the minimum is eight inches and then if it's 40 miles an hour or less, it's six inches. And that is based on the guidance in the Michigan Manual of Uniform Traffic Control devices about street signs and, and the like. So we're trying to follow the same types of safety guidance for these types of signs. So that is also uh, a recommendation. Uh, window signs, we've updated how those are defined and regulated because we're starting to see these window clings go up, which are, you, know, you can kind of see through them, but they really do look like a sign. And basically, you have to go to the outside of that window cling, regardless of the opacity of the window cling, and it can't be more than 10% of the window area. And so it's just making it clear that you can't try to um, get around the intent of the ordinance by using something different. Um, temporary signs, uh, we did a lot of work on those primarily. Um, I do a lot of expert witness work defending municipalities when, they're, when they get sued over their sign ordinance. And one of the key issues that comes up over and over again is content neutrality. 
by law, you really are not supposed to regulate someone's content. Free, it's a free speech issue. It's a, it's a um, constitutional issue. So what you want to do with your sign ordinance is try to make it as content neutral as possible. Basically, you're regulating how large the sign can be, you're regulating what it looks like, whether it's lit, but what is said on the sign, you really are trying to get away from that. So we've made a number of amendments to try to address that um, and just indicate the purpose of the sign, where it goes, it's a monument sign, it's a wall sign, it's a temporary sign, um, even things like political signs. You know, they're, they're allowed during the political season, but we're not telling people what to say. There's no regulation of content, so we wanted to make that clear. Um, another thing that was um, clarified was for monument signs, we wanted to clarify the base. There is a base requirement, and it, right now you already have one, but we kind of expanded a little bit just to, it's got to be something on brick or stone or um, an attractive metal base, something that looks good. And then we've also put in a regulation though, because one of the things we've seen abused in other areas is your sign is measured by the actual sign itself, the copy, you measure that. But sometimes it can be on a structure that's not a sign, it may be a large brick wall. And some have abused that by putting up these really large brick monuments that can be extensive and they still have a small sign that meets the ordinance, but the wall's so large it's totally out of character. So we put in a ratio that you can't in any way have the structure be four, more than four times the size of the actual sign. So it still gives people some creativity. And we actually put an illustration in there to show what that might look like. Um, but it puts a, a reasonable limit on it. Um, so those are those are really, I think, a highlight of, of most of the sign changes. We've, we've made some other minor amendments as we've gone through and trying to just bring this uh, up to speed and try to make it so that there's a little bit more flexibility on some of these um, other signs. So um, I'm happy to try to answer any other questions. Oh, one more. One other thing before I, another thing that uh, Mrs. Lane raised, I figured I should address that as well. Um, the uh, non-conforming sign situation. One of the things that's important to keep in mind, this really comes down to the way the concept of abandonment has been treated in case law. I know Mr. Levy can address that if you, if you want to get um, additional information. But the way the regulation reads that if the property upon a sign, upon which a sign is located, is vacant and the previous use is abandoned, the entire sign and any other element shall be removed within 30 days of becoming abandoned. The term abandonment is, has its own legal meaning. And um, it applies to all types of non-conforming uses and structures. And if someone's actively trying to lease a space that's become vacant, that's not abandonment. Abandonment is when they've given up and they're, they're letting the property go and there's no real reasonable attempt to try to fill that property. At that point, then it's considered abandonment and then that's when that kicks in. So, and that applies, you can't take away, a lot of times you can't take away a non-conforming use if someone's actively trying to um, fill it and stay within the letter of the law. So those are those are some important nuances of how this is going to work based upon the limitations we have and the way laws interpret it. So I just wanted to make that clear as well. Okay, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. The first one is, uh, and the wall sign, uh, you know, and you have no maximum, everything would just come to the planning commission? Um, there is uh, there is maximum area, yes. So for example, if you're in one of the commercial districts and you, your building is between mm -hmm. zero and 100 feet from the right way line, your sign can be no more than 10% of the wall area up to 32 square feet, okay? okay. So it is regulated, but what's not regulated is the size of the letters on that wall sign. Okay. Other than, no, they're not regulated, yeah. Okay. So that, that is the area that is specifically okay. regulated. And what about the logo? Is there any maximum on that? There is no maximum on that as well. So that would be, that would come before the planning commission and they would say yes or no to it? Or well, it, it, I mean, how do you argue it? If, if it's it depends. <coughs> some, signs, some of these, um, some signs are, are uh, reviewed through the administrative process. Mm -hmm. um, as long as they meet the ordinance requirement, then they're reviewed administratively. But if so, there's no maximum. Well, there's a maximum area. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's limited. You can't, 32 square feet is the yeah. maximum size yeah. of your 
between zero and a hundred okay. um, feet from the roadway. That's the way that can be yeah. your commercial mm -hmm. distance. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, I, I had one more question. Go ahead. Okay. I'm sorry. And the other is on the metal base, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had some pretty junky metal bases in the past. Right. So uh, I wanted to make sure that that was defined enough so that it would yeah, and that's something that's going to get uh, that should be reviewed carefully um, when when these signs come in. Um, the way that it's intended is to provide for some flexibility, so that it's not you just. Know. Sometimes you know you get a nice slick looking mm -hmm. looking monument sign that's metal based, and to have them uh, metal with metal can be a nice look, but it's got to be the right the right appearance. So mm -hmm. that's going to require um, number one that. It looks good from the installation perspective, and then also that they maintain it. And obviously, with any sign, it has to be properly maintained. Okay. And the maintenance of the night noise in there. But one of the things I just wanted to bring mm -hmm. up, I Clark would comment on this too, was zoning yeah. appeals. But uh, I mean, the, the problem that we have with just having a, a letter size mm -hmm. is that somebody might have a, a logo that mm -hmm. includes a, a large letter. Mm -hmm. And so we're not going to allow them to have their logo because it has a certain size but if it fits within the, yeah. the size that they're allowed we care if it's letters or no logo i don't or, you know and, you know, and sometimes the letters are more attractive yeah. yeah. yes part. yeah that's correct and, and, and what uh this being addressed here in the ordinance is covering a lot of the mm -hmm. um, the uh things we've had at the board of right. zoning appeals insignia and logos right. and such yeah. applebee's bell tire had to change their whole business signage compared to everywhere else in America for Grand Lake Township. That tells me that maybe our ordinance needed a little bit of tweaking. I appreciate that. And Madam Chair, through you to Mr. Laddie, you, you've read it, the content, content neutral is mm -hmm. all in agreement? Yes. Okay. That's all. Okay, anyone, any other questions? Yes. I just have a couple questions. One is like on Bagger Days and also on Bell Tire, can they go back now and say they want to change their sign because now we have more flexibility? And then how much is it going to cost them to do that? They could. They'd have to just pay the sign permit fee to have it reviewed again and change it out. But so on bagger days, good. they would be able to get a bigger logo, locomotive out there with, with the new requirements or not? I they did, yes, they would. They potentially could, yes. And then they would have limited to the 24 inches. Right, and maybe Bell Tire might change theirs so it's closer to the national standard then? They could come back and petition for uh, a new sign, a new sign permit. And the only other one is you said that if they had large letters that they would have to monitor it. So you're saying because if it's just letter restrictive, they'd get two, you know, huge letters or whatever. I guess the planning commission would look at it and say, no, even though it fits these requirements, it doesn't look right. And that's how we control it or how is well, that? No, no, you know, it, it, you know, not necessarily. It's, um, you, it, you don't have specific aesthetic guidelines with the sign. And the letters can be as, as long as it's, um, if it's reasonable and meets the general regulations, it's going to, and I, you know, like I said, is there a risk that someone could come up with a large letter that's five feet tall? Um, yes, but there, there's going to be a practical limit to what they could fit because of the small size of the sign. So it should correct it, itself, right? It, it, it's going to be somewhat self-regulating. Okay. Yeah, so unless you happen to be a rare business that has maybe three letters in your business name, and you're, but you still are not going to be bigger, once again. Yeah. Than 32 right. square feet if you're within yeah. zero and 100 feet of the roadway. So, so the ordinance should be able to take care of itself. I know you were concerned about it, saying possibly this could happen, but it sounds like there's enough restrictions in there that it should be okay, right? I, I think it will be, and it's like anything. You, you monitor it, and if all of a sudden we notice there's a problem, we could come back and make a minor tweak and, and fix it. But we, I, I, I don't see letter height, letter maximums in many of the other communities I work with. And there hasn't been a major problem with it. Um, so would so we tweak it? If I came in with this unusual thing and somehow meets all the requirements and you don't like it, would you tell me before I put it up or what would you do? Well, if, if I saw something that seemed to be inappropriate, I certainly have the ability to mention how about trying another approach. Oh. But there is a limit if it meets the ordinance requirements, there's only so far away right. to go. Um, and, and then but, we, but we try to, and then the worst case scenario is the sign goes up. And, and then, you, once again, you're, it's like your zoning ordinance. You're always reevaluating it. And if you see something that's not working, but I think 
the planning commission was hoping to allow for some more creativity. Well, I understand that. So if something slips through, does that person see? Fall on the grandfather clause so he doesn't have to change it? That's or right. Once you get the permit, and as long as your <coughs> permit is legally obtained, uh, or the ordinance is in place, you can continue to have that sign. Oh, okay. Unless it's just you the fall under right. the aban abandonment clause. Oh, right? okay. And then all future signs, once you change it, have right. to be the. Yeah, I just didn't want to want all that had to add expense because the guy meets the rules, and all of a sudden, okay, now you got to pay another $2,000 because <laughs> you're just a hair off because our new yeah. ordinance. Anybody that has a sign up right now that's legally established and continue to keep that sign up as long as they don't have the property. Oh, okay. All right, that's great. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? I think you should comment. I, I, I like the ordinance. Mm -hmm. and, and it was definitely needed updating. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like for, for the board to look at this coming spring. Now we've got this ordinance. Let's look at enforcement because I know there's several businesses out there that don't meet the present ordinance as far as the window claims that you mentioned and the blinking open signs that flash every 10 seconds mm -hmm. and so forth that I would like to see us enforce. Especially we're going to tell a new business coming to the township that you can't do this, you can't do that, and then the party store down the road's got window cleans up for three years that we never pulled a permit for. Mm -hmm. I think we need to. Or the fast food restaurant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to, a little better enforcement of what we got. Yeah. It's a great ordinance. I think there's, also, there's some also maintenance issues on a few large signs too. Yeah. So I guess the key there is if that person did put the sign up without the uh, ordinance, you know. The ordinance he, doesn't apply, you can take it down. Then, or, but if he <laughs> did have it, he can't. He, he doesn't have to take it down. If he fit the requirements. If he fit the requirement at the time of the permit. Right, but if he doesn't have one, that's the only way we can take I'm it I'm referring to a lot of businesses that did not pull a permit right. whatsoever. Yeah. Right, that's, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, if it's illegally established, then you got a different issue. Right, right. okay, okay. nothing Great. to do with this. Yeah, that sounds good. Yep. Thank you. Any Thank other you. questions or discussion? Okay. And I'd ask for a motion on we, we have a motion here, right? I did already. Yeah. Oh, I think it was seconded. Yeah, I think it was seconded also. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. Myself, yes. Yes. Mr. Goosen. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Dr. Wearing. Yes. Mr. Kemp. Yes. Okay, we're moving on to the approval of the fitness of the, uh, fitness equipment to be used in the police department fitness room at a cost not to exceed forty thousand dollars. Madam Chair, I would move. Uh, I would make that motion. I would support that motion. Okay. All those in favor? Oh, yeah. Did you? I'm sorry. You discussion? Yeah, just a discussion. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to thank uh, Sergeant Aaron Quinn and, and Chief Stan for all of their efforts in preparing the summary of the $40,000 police gym equipment. Um, uh, but to be fiscally responsible, we have to take care of our needs of the township before we take the wants of the township. Uh, we need every available dollar to make sure we can fill the township manager's position. We need to fill the planning department manager's position because Mr. Edwards was filling that, so that's the second position. We also need to fill the position of the finance department where Sandy is retired in May, but we also have ongoing union negotiations. Um, so we also have to make sure that our fund balance is maintained between the 12 and 15% before we can fill any wants of the department. So at this point, because it's a time issue, I have to vote no. Yeah. I would like to make a comment that I, I appreciate everything you're saying, um, Mr. Muzak. However, uh, there was funds, you heard our finance director uh, indicate the other night that at least $44,000 was, was unspent, unspent in the police department. I'd like to, I like a philosophy where we encourage departments to save money where they aren't hurting the business, the, run, the, the, the operation of the township. But I wouldn't. I don't like the the philosophy that we would then make them return that money for their efforts. And that is, you save money and you can do things like uh, uh, equipping a room that was paid for. The room was built and designed uh, designed and built in that building seven years ago, and it sat <coughs> just a couple of pieces of equipment that was that the employees brought in themselves. I want to answer your comment about the uh, uh, the fund balance. If you read the audit uh, presented to us in June, uh, we had uh, $1.87 million in fund balance, which is 
for a lot of expenditures. So we're well within the 12 to 15 percent recommended by both state guidelines and, and our auditor as well. Um, this equipment is both for the men and the women and the police department. I made comments the other night that there's a national study. In fact, Mr. Quinn, uh, Sergeant Quinn, uh, presented that to me. So 40% uh, of law enforcement uh, employees in, in U the U.S. Are, are classified overweight. I'm just going to, because I don't like the term obese, but that's what it says in the article, by the way. But, uh, and, and we, if we truly, and I said this Tuesday, if we're truly committed to employee wellness, okay, uh, this is a start. Well, it's okay for us to spend $1.6 million in health care premiums just for the police department for fixing people, but we don't have $40,000 to prevent sickness and, and, to, and to, you know, to help, uh, uh, to help wellness. That, that just blows my mind right there. So anyway, uh, we, we, we are healthy. You've seen in the report from the from the budget amendments from the township uh, finance director. We're returning. We're, we're actually paying two hundred thousand more uh, to the OPEB than what was even in the audit report. That's pretty healthy as far as I'm concerned. In fact, that's that's all uh, department heads as well as this board's uh, diligence. I, I I think that's just a wonderful story. But the police department did have at least forty four thousand dollars left over, and so. Uh, I believe this is the right thing to do. Uh, this, is this any different than the comment you made before? Yes. All right. If we have, then why don't we have, well, I'm just stating this because we don't have the funds to fund our finance department as well as the manager or, or the um, planning manager. It's on there. That we've already approved it. This is our 2015 budget. It is in there. It's, it's in there, but we don't have the funds to do it because we were told with the adjustments by our finance director that it will not be funded until we find other funds. So that was on your adjustments. I budget right here. It's a balanced budget in those positions. But if you look at the adjustments. Wait a minute. Okay. All right. I will allow one more comment from each. I'm not going to make another comment. Well, I mean, neither. Just if you're not going to tell me the facts, then why, why cut me off? I, I just would like to support what uh, Mr. Kent has said. Uh, we'll just go without the department heads. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see us have consensus on issues when we vote on them. And I can see everybody's point. I, I see Mr. Muzak's point of wanting to make sure that we're fiscally sound. And I think everybody on this board wants that too. I don't know if anybody that um, really looks at things and doesn't have concern for the bottom line. Um, in thinking about this, I think one of the things we have to look at is what kind of culture we're creating here. You know, is it just a workout room or are we creating a, a place where people want to come to work? Um, I look at some of the, the thriving municipalities uh, around the state, and you, you look at them, and they've created a culture. And mm -hmm. I think you know part of that starts with how we run our, our township government. Um, and one of the things that uh, Mr. Kent mentions is the uh, budget, and that you know how do we deal with a department that, that saves money? Um, mm -hmm. You know, and and really they aren't saying, hey, let's you know uh, spend it on something just something that's going to benefit everybody and I think if we if we take that money away it kind of creates the, the notion that departments better hurry up and spend that yes. money and I've seen governmental units around yeah. the state do that too that or federally what have you that every call you your user lose it and I really don't want to promote that kind of mentality either um, is it a want or a need that's probably a little bit of both um, but if it, if it helps morale, um, you know, we've, we've had a very tough um, couple of situations this year. There are police, I and mean, I don't know how they go out with some of these scenes where people are injured. But uh, if it helps deal with that kind of stuff and deal with stress, I know I'm rattling on here, but I'm just going through some of my thought process of why I think it, it's something that uh, we should approve. Um, I, did some, I, I did talk with our uh, finance director and uh, she said, although it probably shouldn't be on the record, but um, 
she thought that we were going to probably be adding to the fund balance and that will be well beyond the 12 and 15 or at least be at that at the minimum. Um, so I guess we want to attract the best people. We've attracted some great people recently as department heads and I want to continue that trend. I would like to see us try and take a look at whether or not we can make that room available to everybody in some way. I understand yeah. we have some security concerns, you know, with everybody being able to enter the police department right. building, but if there's some way to do that, I'd like to see if there's a way that, you know, whether it's our DPW guys or firemen or whatever that can do that. Just, I think it helps. It might help with uh, creating a team effort here. You know, we, we might have some um, issues with different departments, mm -hmm. but you know what, maybe this is a way that we can come together and maybe it'll help do that if, if we can make it a room that's used by everybody. That's what I was looking at. I haven't had to change yet, but I'd like to look at other huge departments where they have the fitness and how they worked it for their security because I think that there, there may be a way to work it so that we could have it. And in dealing with other, with health insurance companies that are coming in to me now, uh, that is one of the things in every program now too, what are you doing for fitness? Right. For, you know, and preventive health. I don't have any problem with it being just for the police department. I would like to see something over here, and maybe at the fire department, wherever wherever we have places. But I really have no problem with it being just at the police department because it's a way to build camaraderie. There's about 40 people in the police department. This is costing forty thousand dollars. The stuff will last at least five years. That's like two hundred bucks a year on these people. And they deserve that. I, I would like I to see us just not yeah. to interrupt, but I would like to see us look at long term what we do because rather than just making a forty thousand yeah. dollar expenditure in five years of stuff is ready for the mm -hmm. trash. Somehow come up with just like we do with our fire trucks, right. with our DPW trucks. And I also look at long term picture of what we want to do as far as creating yeah. a culture here of the yeah. people that want to come and work for us. We're no different than right. To some other company and why would they want to come work for Grand Lake Township as opposed to other and so I think we need to look at long term how we sustain this kind of thing. And maybe even add to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, it's in. Yes. Uh, Sergeant Quinn would like to just make one comment about the length of the equipment. Yes. Um, and that's also you made a nice little point about Yes. You made a great point about uh, mm -hmm. being able to attract people and recruiting as well as we had a, a facility here that would also attract maybe uh, people who are already in shape, things like that. But just in general, for for every employee, we would want to work here. It's a good thing. Uh, as far as the length of the equipment, this equipment will last a very long time, much much longer than five years. Uh, most of the equipment, I should say, most a lot of it is a lifetime guarantee. Uh, bars, uh, most of the plates that are about 25 pounds. Um, I wouldn't be able to say everything off the top of my head, but a lot of it has at least has or has a lifetime guarantee. Um, most of the most expensive equipment, treadmill, um, that has a five-year parts and labor warranty. Um, <coughs> just the, the warranties are tremendous, and the equipment has very, very few moving parts. So as far as maintenance, things of that nature, the equipment will last a really, really long time, much more than five years. And the maintenance yeah. on top of that is nothing more than producing a few Certainly. So, so pennies per person per year. Yes. So good, good investment. Yeah. All right. Just here, and I, I'm assuming most of my yes. colleagues at the border. Okay, but there you. That's all right. Yeah. I'm sorry. The, the police department's going to going to maintain the equipment to it. This is going to be part of it, but they're not going to be coming to us every five years asking for forty thousand dollars. That is not their intent. I'm sure, they're going to maintain it. Yeah, there'll, be, there'll, be rules, there'll be rules in place sure. as far as cleaning it, um, and it'd be up to the chief as far as expenditures. But and I, I know how that building's maintained and how the employees treat that building. I have no concerns whatsoever. Absolutely. going to be done well. Okay. Yes, I have no qualms about the equipment. It's a timing issue. If we can't fill these other positions, then I have to state that we, we won't be able to fill it. Hopefully we can. But the way it looks, you know, we've got three positions we have to fill, and we need every dollar we need. I'm not against it. I know it's good for the police department. I appreciate everything you do. 
I'm just trying to protect all the entities here at the township and trying to make sure every department has a proper department yet. So I mean, planning won't, doesn't have one now. We're missing one in finance, and we're also missing one in the other department. So that's not that I'm against it. I'm just trying to, it's a timing thing. If we had that all spent and everything was still fine, then it wouldn't be a problem. So. Okay. I just, I one, yeah, just one comment. And the reason why I bring up, you know, allowing more than just the police, and it, it isn't because I, you know, part of it is that if, if a department saves some money, I'd like to see it benefit everybody. Because otherwise, if I'm running a certain department and I save it, and I just want it to stay in my department, <coughs> I'm not sure it creates a whole lot of teamwork. It, uh, and so, I, for the spirit of trying to work together, is what I'm saying. That Hey, we had the police department that was able to mm -hmm. save this money. What what can the finance department save next year that can go towards like the com <laughs> to towards well, the common well, good of well, everybody? Well, and so, kind of a shared effort. Mm -hmm. but, and you know, I want to I want to make sure we fill fill these positions as well that that uh, Mr. Luzak is speaking of. It's going to take more than forty thousand dollars to do that, and I'm sure he he knows that. I'm not telling him. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hopeful that we can do that as well. Okay, are we ready for a vote? Yes. Okay. You want to be a roll call? No, we already have the motion and the support. Yes, okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Thank you. We'll start exercising. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, <coughs> presented to us from the uh, treasurer of the fire commission and on Tuesday night, the amended fire commission budget for 2014. Um, could I have a motion? Do we accept that budget? Well, let's do them separately and just the and fire commission and I just say that the yeah. board consider the approval of our 2014 fire commission amended budget. I'll support that. I have, I have a question. On yes. That. Do we need to put the uh, to specify the dollar amount of the budget? Yes. We do. In there, mm -hmm. printing in the budget, but not in the motion. What's that? I'm sorry. In, in the minutes. In the minutes. Yeah. Right. 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 Or you could include as presented on Tuesday night. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be fine. Yeah. That's what I was. As presented yeah. by the fire commission. Yes. Yeah. And then it's a robot, right? No, that's right. Oh, really? Okay. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? I'd also like to make a motion that the board consider the approval of the proposed 2015 fire commission budget as presented Tuesday night, a balanced budget. Thank you. I'll support that. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, was the motion passes. The board will consider the 2014 budget amendment as presented. Okay. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Support that as well. Thank you. This one is a roll call, Madam Chair. Okay. Okay. Was that Clark? Clark? Yeah, yes. Clark. Yes. Thanks. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Ms. Alf, yes. Mrs. Hoffman. Yes. Mr. Guzik. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Dr. Reardon. Did you leave? Mr. Mr. Stepped out for a moment. Mr. Kent. Yes. You have a vote, Jude. Yes. What is your vote? Yes or no? 1914. Amended budget. Budget. And it's a roll call. So your turn. It's my turn. Yes. Okay. Okay. The board will consider the, <coughs> the uh, approval of the 2014 special fund budget amendment. Can I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion. Support. Thank you. Roll call again. Mr. Bennett. Yes. Myself, yes. Mrs. Hoffman. Yes. Mr. Guzik. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Dr. Reardon. Yes. Mr. Kent. Yes. Uh, 
board will consider an increase, which will double the supervisor's compensation until such time as a, as a superintendent is hired. Is, uh, is amount is approximately additional fifteen hundred dollars per month. And I'll I make that motion. I will include myself on this. You want to ask permission to abstain? <laughs> yes, please. Is that agreed by the board? Sure. Certainly. Sure. Can we make a comment? For the members of Warner Two, we discussed this at length Tuesday. Um, township <coughs> Superintendent Keith Edwards has stepped down. Keith Edwards ran the day to day business of the township. Keith Edwards was the general manager of the township, if you will. Um, and Mickey Hawkins is going to be assuming or filling that role until we hire a new township superintendent. So this is not a permanent thing, this is an interim thing until the position is filled to compensate her for the additional duties that she's fulfilling and probably not enough considering the workload she's going to be carrying. So thank you, Mickey. Well, thank you. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is it roll call? Oh, is it? It doesn't have to be roll call. Okay. Aye. <coughs> okay. All those opposed? Thank you very much. Uh, well, Go to the consideration of the tentative settlement on wages for the AFSCME Chapter D collective bargaining agreement. Madam Chair, we pass on that item until. Um, well, actually, I'm going to ask you to consider a, uh, an executive session. And if, we could, if you could have that executive session after you finish with your reports and okay. pass on item K until we return from the executive session, I appreciate it. Yes, L, I think you can go ahead with it. Right. And then again, after you're finished with L, and you added number four to L, then if you consider a, uh, an executive session, that right. Okay, the appointments. The, the uh, board will consider the appointment of Kathy Sostrap to the Pension Advisory Committee. I'll so, make that motion. Okay, I'll support. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. The board will consider the appointment of Mickey Hoffman to the I-69 Corridor Board. Uh, I've been the uh, deputy as far as that's concerned uh, on this board, and now that he's gone, the need for the I'll make that motion. I'll support. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The board will consider the appointment of Craig Withers to the McFarland Library Board. I'll make that motion as well. Support. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. And this is, and, and now we have the uh, additional appointment of Larry Anderson to the Parks and Recreation Board. I'll make that motion. Support. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> With enthusiasm. <laughs> okay, I'll listen. I'll listen. Favor? Aye. All those opposed? Madam Chair, at this time, the board consider an executive session to discuss uh, labor negotiations? I'll make the motion that the board go into executive session to discuss labor negotiations. No support. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Dr. Rarity. Yes. Mr. Kirk. Yes. We will be back, Dr. Yes, we will. Yes, we will have that.
as far as planning commission of the Metro Alliance, uh, actually we did have a meeting this month. So. Okay. Very good. Motion to adjourn. Oh, sorry. No, no, we're good. <laughs> I had a yeah. report. Okay. Report. Larry and Clark. Okay. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I